Hello everybody and welcome to a tutorial on how to use my speedrun kit, the speedrun kit by Code Theorem. If you don't have the kit yet, please go to the description of this video, click the link and it will take you to the kit. The top link will take you to the kit. This kit is to be used so that you can create your very own speedrun game. Recently, speedrun has become a popular title that many people have remade by themselves, and I decided, well, it's becoming a genre. Why shouldn't I just make it to where anybody can make one? Because it's a simple game, and it's a fun game concept. So, by doing this, it makes it easier for everybody to get their foot in the door with this speedrun concept. So you're going to get and take one of the speedrun kit by Code Theorem. Uh, actually, I don't think that's in the title by Code Theorem. So the speedrun kit. Go ahead and get the speedrun kit. Then we're going to go to view. Okay, after you do that, make sure to boot up Roblox Studio. Go ahead and start a new game and edit it. Don't build. Don't go to build, mo build mode. Go to edit mode. Once you're then, or there, go to view and click toolbox. In here, you'll see in my models, speedrun kit by Code Theorem. Here is the kit as it stands now. I might make additions to it later, but if I do, it'll probably only be things like this cannon. Here's how the kit works. If we go up to the Explorer, we see speedrun kit by Code Theorem. Expand that, and we have several items. We have a README, which gives you a couple of quick instructions, but most of the instructions are actually in this video. Inside, we also have several models, level kit, level props, and several others. Let's start with the level kit. The level kit is this part right here. The level kit contains the teleport, the level end, the level start, and the speed up bricks. Here's how it works. We have a stage number. Now you want to set this stage number to the number of the stage that the player is currently going to be playing when they're at this level. So the first level should be one. Say they've made it to the past level one, you want to set that to two. Then they've made it, say, past three levels, you want to set that to four. Okay, because it's going to be the fourth stage. So that is the stage number. And if there are any duplicates, you're going to run into problems. You want them to increment properly. Then we have the teleport. This is the end of the game right here. And if I go ahead and I press, eh, I'll show you in a moment. Uh, but this has a cool animation to it. I know it looks kind of strange when it's staying still, but it's really cool. Then we have this tiny grass part right here and this is the end of the level this is what the player should touch right before they get to the end of the level this is what the teleport should be on this will slow the player down to a normal walking speed so that they don't overrun and jump past the teleport lastly we have the level start which is this bigger grass brick here and this brick is where they will start their level they'll start in the center of it this is where the player will begin each and every stage. On top of this, you should put this white brick, which is the speed up. And I know I said lastly for the level start, but that was actually incorrect. This is last. This brick, the speed up brick, will speed them up to any speed that you want. And you can alternate and change that speed by expanding the speed up and changing this speed value. The default speed for a Roblox character is 16. The default speed for one of my speedrun kits, speed uh, like level speeds, is 160, so 10 times the normal speed. But you can set this to any numerical value that you want, and they will speed up to that speed. Next up is the level props, which is where I'll likely put additions when I do have them. Currently, we have a cannon, which I'll demonstrate shortly. The cannon has one property that can be changed. In here, you can set the power, which is by default set to 400. 
I suggest if you want to change this value, go ahead and tinker around with it and play around with it and see how far it launches you each time until you get it just right for what you're trying to do. Now we have the replicated storage, server script service, server storage, starter GUI, and workspace. Each of these is actually named after one of the primary used so, uh, services in Roblox game development. If you go to your explorer and you go ahead and you unexpand workspace, you will see replicated storage, server script service, server storage, and starter GUI, and up here you have of course workspace. They are named this way on purpose. What you're going to do is you're going to select everything within these models, not the models themselves. Only the things that are in the models, you're going to select them, you're going to right click, and you're going to click cut. You are then going to go down to wherever they belong, in this case, replicated storage. You're going to select that in your explorer, right click, and click paste into. We can do this for everything that's here. Cut, paste into, cut, paste into, cut, and now paste into. And lastly, workspace, cut, paste into. You now have all of these set up. Next, you just have to create your level. Once you've created your level using the level kit, which I recommend copying, and then in workspace pasting into, go ahead and work with the level kit that's not actually a part of the speedrun kit so that you don't have to keep inserting the model over and over and over. Once you have this and you create your level, you can name it anything you want, but make sure that you have everything inside the model as it is. Don't put them inside models inside the model. Keep them as they are. You can put anything else into this model as long as it doesn't share a name with any of these. So it can't be named teleport, it can't be named level end, it can't be named level start, and it can't be named speed up or stage number, but it can be named anything else. Then we're going to go to stage number, and you just want to make sure again to set that to the stage number, the level number in the order in which you want the players to beat it. After that, all you want to do is click it in the work in the explorer and drag it into levels. This way, the editor will know exactly how it should work. The script should work perfectly fine as long as you follow these steps. I'm going to delete this level kit and show you some cool animations that work with this kit by default. If I press run, we see this arrow bobbing up and down indicating for each player that they should hop into this cannon. I'll be demonstrating exactly how the cannon works shortly. Over here at the spawn, we see these rings floating up, disappearing, and continuing a cycle with three rings at all times. It just looks kind of cool. I will now demonstrate how the cannon works. To do this, I'm going to move the kit over and I'm going to insert a spawn location, which by the way, you'll want to insert a spawn location with er, outside of all of your maps or in some room nearby, because when a player is respawned, he will be automatically teleported to the stage he is currently at. Home, spawn, and now I'm going to drag this spawn location right here, so that when I play this game to show you, I'm sure that I'll be really close. Here we go, at the spawn location. If I hop up into my cannon, I get launched extremely far across the map. Again, you can toggle that number, it's currently 400, and determine how fast and how far the player should be launched. Thank you for watching. This has been a tutorial on how to use the speedrun kit by Code Theorem. Please 
give me credit if you use this by putting a link to the model in your description. Share this video with your friends if they want to make a speedrun kit. And I will catch you guys later. Goodbye.